I want to pray for it. You know what? The forgiveness message, everybody here has got it. This is for the benefit of Carol in Missouri. You need to hear this because I just hear the Spirit really prompting me to tell you that this is a new chapter in your life and that you're coming into a fruition beyond anything you've seen before. And this is a new chapter and you cannot compare it to previous chapters. For God says, I'm promoting you and I'm, I'm bringing you into a new level because of your obedience. But because you've been faithful in another man's ministry, I'm giving you your own and it's about to begin. And Jennifer, come on up. When Jennifer was ordained, Bishop Hammond said, it's going to be harder for you not to prophesy than to prophesy. And she's been kind of waiting. How many visitors do we have? Pick up your hand. Okay. I want to give that, that man in the back with the tie. Your first name again? Ron. 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 Ron, I hear the Lord say that there have been some things that have troubled you in the past and they're continuing to trouble you, but the Lord says you've shown yourself faithful in a number of situations and the Lord says I'm going to move on your behalf and you're going to see some answers in a surprising way, a way that you would not have figured out on your own. And I'm seeing God put, like putting a puzzle together, putting pieces together to make something that didn't make sense previously fit. And the Lord says, I'm going to move and you're going to know it's me. And the Lord says the time is going to come when you're going to laugh and you're going to rejoice and you're going to say, I didn't know God could do that. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for Rob. Rob, would you stand up? I told him he was going to preach today, but... <laughs> I'm saving you from that. I chose to preach this. <laughs> Rob, God's saying the same thing. There's a new chapter that you're turning your life into. And the things of the past that were entangling you, God says, I've set you free. And it was like he was rising up on the inside of you and breaking through strongholds and a net that was like spaghetti to him. And that's the way you need to receive it. That these things cannot hold you back any longer. That it's time for an acceleration. It's a time to grow forward. It's a time to move forward and to test the waters in some new areas. God's saying, fear not, for I am with you. And any, any of the fears or excuses that stand in the way of that, God is removing it with one statement. I am with you. You are without excuse. Jessica. Would you stand, please? I'm hearing the Lord say that, daughter, you are a faithful servant, and you have a heart to serve. But the Lord says, I'm taking you into a new way, a new place with me. The Lord says, I'm going to reveal to you the treasures of my heart. And the Lord says, your heart is going to truly respond. Because the Lord says, there have been some things that have held you back in your spiritual life. And the Lord says, I'm putting my finger on those things, and I'm going to remove them, and I'm going to move you into an intimacy with me that your heart is dreamed about but also feared and the Lord says I'm going to bring you I'm going to may bring you kicking and screaming the Lord says but I'm going to take you to that place and the Lord says that place is going to be a place of great rejoicing for you but the Lord says more than that that place is going to be a launching pad for you it's going to launch a ministry to others says the Lord and you're going to have a heart of true compassion for those people and the Lord says there won't be the entanglements of your flesh says the spirit of God but the Lord says I'm going to send you to targeted people and the Lord says it's going to even surprise you at times who I send you to says God and the Lord says even those people who are big names in the body the Lord says you're going to come across them they're going to cross your path says the Lord and you're going to have clear pure prophetic words for them, concise and pure, that will cut through some things and bring greater freedom into their lives. And the Lord says, I will have already prepared them and they will receive what you have, says the Spirit mm. of God. Amen. Very good. I just want to prophesy to um, Audrey in Virginia. She's gone through some bouts now. And the Lord says, basically, you are stroke free the rest of your life. Fear not, daughter, you are stroke free free the rest of your life. That's our, one of our phone counselors, Audrey from Virginia.
Kelly, please stand up. Kelly, I hear the Spirit of God say, Daughter, I'm stabilizing you. The Lord says, I'm, I'm tying up some loose ends, and I'm, I'm placing some new things in your heart. I'm ministering to you by my Spirit. The Lord says, I'm bringing you out of uh, what in the past has been a cerebral Christianity into a true spiritual Christianity. The Lord says, I'm going to bring you to the place of full surrender to me, says the Spirit of God. I'm going to move you into new places in the Spirit. The Lord says, says, I'm going to open up spiritual gifts. The Lord says, and I'm going to begin to give you dreams. And the Lord says, I want you to take out a journal, and I want you to begin to write those things down that I give you. And I hear the Lord say, not only am I going to give you dreams, but I'm going to give you understanding of dreams. And the Lord says, those dreams you have, they're going to be keys for your own life. They're going to be keys for other people's lives. And the Lord says, it's going to unlock hidden things in the spirit, says the spirit of God. And I'm going to take you into a full, rich, deep understanding of me. The Lord says, I'm going to make you privy to my own heart. The Lord says, and you're going to cry tears of joy at the things I'm revealing to you and at the works that I'm working in your heart. And the Lord says, I'm going to make you an instrument of blessing to others in the process, says the spirit of God. And you've brought stability, strength into your husband's life as well because you listen to him and he listens to you. And there's a safety in that, that you make your decisions based on two green lights or two red lights, not one red light, one green light. And in that union and communion, your, your path is going to be straight before you and you're going to accomplish more with less effort in the days ahead. You're going to see two is better than one. You're going to see that experientially in the things of God in the days ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was something I wanted for Joel and Natalie. Would you stand up, Joel and Natalie? It was prophesied to Jennifer and I from the day we met by total strangers and, and prophetic voices around the country. They said the same thing, that the two of you have a oneness anointing. And I'm putting that upon you, and we're just releasing an impartation, that you're going to walk in a supernatural oneness anointing where husband and wife are going to be a team. They're going to work together. They, again, too, they're going to listen to each other. One's going to hear the other, and the other has a say, and iron's going to sharpen iron, and God's going to bring them into a, a, a sharp threshing machine that is going to accomplish great things and remove, remove uh, borders and hedges and uh, obstacles. They're going to do it together. They're going to be like a sharp threshing machine together because of their union and communion. I just release that oneness anointing. This is just as, as if the Jesus in them is then combining them into making the, the two one. One in, stream. One stream. And it's going to flow with exponential anointing in the days ahead in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Aaron, I'm hearing for you. Please stand. Aaron, I'm hearing for you that God is saying, I have some plans for you that you haven't thought of yet. So the Lord says, be not surprised when I move you into some unusual directions and connect you up with some people that you might not have chosen to be connected with, says God. But I'm going to do a turn in your life. I'm going to do a shift in your life. I'm going to take you into some areas that you haven't been comfortable with in the past, the Lord says, and I'm going to place my anointing upon you, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says at that time, do not make excuses, says the Lord, because you are well able to do those things that I've called you to do. The Lord says if you can run marathons in the natural, the Lord says you can run marathons and do sprints in the spirit, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says I put it in you to persevere. I put it in you to, to be steadfast, to, to be fortified by me, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says the day will come when you know what it means to rise up with wings like eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint, says the Spirit of God, because I've placed that in you. And the Lord says, what's been in the natural, the Lord says, I'm going to shift and bring into the spiritual realm. And the Lord says, I'm going to open some doors in your life. And the Lord says, do not fear. 
Do not be afraid. The Lord says there's going to be life in your spirit when it's the door I want you to go through. And the Lord says, boldly go, boldly go, boldly go where I send you. And I'm even in seeing in the future, not now, but in the future, I'm even seeing some traveling where God is going to send you to certain places. And he's going to put a word in your mouth and it's going to be a breakthrough word. And it's going to break through situations for other people and for groups of people. And the Lord says there's going to bring The Lord says you're going to be one who's going to bring refreshings and unlock the heavenlies into certain areas and certain ministries and in the lives of certain people. The Lord says he's going to be giving you keys. So so the Lord says, study the word with your heart. The Lord says, because in the days to come, I'm going to be speaking to you from my word and I'm going to put some dreams in your heart some dreams in your heart that you might not totally understand. But the Lord says, I want you to be like like Mary and ponder and hold those things in your heart, not try to make anything come to happen because God says when the time comes, I will make it plain and I will open those things before you, says God. I want to pray for the entire congregation, those watching by Ustream. Over a period of time, uh, you deal with different people around the country and when I see a pattern God speaks to me through that very often like you see the same thing happening I'll tell you what I'm seeing happening the pride of opinion so I want to make I want to expose that and bring it to the light there are people who could be moving into their destiny but they've got an opinion I can even remember once when Bob Jones shared that remember he said God why didn't you tell me that he says because you already had an opinion (laughs) your opinions can block the insight that God wants to give you to respond. And I'm telling you, pride of opinion is, is basically getting in the way. And the carnal nature has a way that when you don't know the answer, you plug in what you think. That's called an opinion. It's not necessarily truth. It's not necessarily reality. All right? So how many are willing to do the homework on that? Because I believe you can move to another place in, in the kingdom of God, but you're going to have to die to reading people. That's not discernment. Fault finding is not discernment. I could do that before I was saved. I was good at it. <laughs> That's just an opinion, and you're coming up with it. It's, where's the redemption? It's, when someone says, uh, I got this word that so-and-so is having trouble in their marriage. Where's the redemption? What are you doing about it? Don't, don't give me problems. Give me solutions. We need to be a solution-oriented people. But I'll tell you, the problem that I've seen, there's people that it just breaks my heart. I know that I could help, but I can't get past the pride. They either already know or like the Pharisees. They already know. I learned this before. I took a course. And you can't penetrate that. Only humility and come before the Lord like a child. Perhaps I don't know as much as I ought to know. Wisdom searches out a matter. Say, God, show me. Show me. So, Father, right now, if I've got opinions, people, places, and things, if I've got an opinion that in any way is standing in there, we expose it to the light of Jesus within. Jesus, search my heart. Just like David said, for secret faults. That means I don't know about it. Because here's the word of the Lord. God's going to start revealing your blind spots. When he shines his light, they're no longer blind. How many are willing to see blind spots? You know what's humbling about your blind spot? If you ever looked at what they call a Jahari window, your blind spots other people see, but you don't. That's kind of humbling in itself, isn't it? Everybody else sees it, but you don't. Pride doesn't see itself very well. How many want the Holy Spirit to search their heart for blind spots? things that are preventing them from moving into greater life of abundance that he has for you. Father, right now, any pride of opinion, I just reckon that dead on the cross, and I receive forgiveness, and I'm asking you to search my heart for secret faults. I'm asking you to search me, O oh God, as only you can search. I can't think about it. They're, they're, they're secret to me. Only the, only the flashlight of the Holy Spirit searches all the innermost parts of the belly. And I am wel- welcoming that flashlight of search into the innermost parts of my belly. Search me, O oh God, for anything that would cause me to commit greater sin down the road somewhere because I don't know that it's there. Reveal it to me. I die to a pride of opinion. I die to any pride of opinions that I have. I'm 
opening them, and God's going to basically put people in your path and circumstances to subdue that area in your life. So it might not be comfortable at first because it might have to get your attention, huh? I would rather do it the easy way and go to prayer and ask God to show me. You ready? Holy Spirit, I'm asking right now for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Show me any opinions that I have that I need to receive forgiveness of so that reality and truth might flow through there. That inspiration and revelation might rise up with great clarity. I receive forgiveness for opinions. I've seen people have opinions like that person over there on the cell phone, I know they're talking about me. I saw the way that person looked. I saw that person ignore me. I saw that person make a face. I know they're thinking about me. All of that is the devil's tool, tools. I release those judgments right now of all opinions. I want God, I want his report. And I welcome because there's a spirit on those opinions that keep you from being all that God wants you to be and from doing all that God's called you to do and stepping out. This is a season for a, a wonderful leap of faith, but it's gonna, it's gonna take some people who have already made a judgment. I don't do, now this sounds self-serving, but there's people in the church that I've ministered to for 40 years that it's amazing how, I don't do children's church. I don't do children. How many of that is God telling you not to do children and how many of that is you don't want to be inconvenienced? Hmm? That's very possible that it's just an inconvenience and it's an opinion. Let God shine his light on that. So Father, right now I receive forgiveness for the pride of opinion. Expose my blind spots because you and you alone have a redemptive purpose in my life. And I don't want anything to stand, come between what you and I have together. Good homework? Why don't we see if, Sid, would you be willing to come up here and pronounce a blessing over us as we end? This is something I've been studying and will be teaching on in days ahead, but for today, just receive. Why don't you stand up? Uh, now, this is a blessing from the Bible that God said if Moses would pray it over us, over the Jewish people, his name would be sealed upon you. It's a good promise. The Lord has already blessed you. The Lord has already smiled upon you. The Lord has already surrounded you with his favor. The Lord has already gifted you. The Lord has already given you his shalom, his completeness in your spirit, in your soul and in your body. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to end with the scripture I begin with. Philippians 1.6 He who began a good work in you is going to continue it. And we're going to practice by reason of use. Amen.